What is up, guys? McDouble's back again with a brand new video. Today, my friends, we are going to be playing Lost Ark Paladin PvP. I've been doing a lot, practicing a lot. I've put in 70 hours, apparently, since the game's launch, and I've been PvPing for at least three-fourths of that. I ended up coming up with a build that is pretty freaking good. It's a DPS Paladin build that does a solid amount of damage and has a lot of CC, and I want to show it to you guys. I racked up like 40 wins yesterday just queuing up. I finally got to tier 1. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's jump right in. So the goal was simple, really. I literally took my comments to heart. I had people telling me what to do, and I wasn't planning to listen to them, but it turned out it worked out exactly how they advised me to do it. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, first I was picking a class, then when Deadeye didn't work out, they said, maybe find a class you like. I found a class I liked, and the next comments I saw were, okay, now make a build, which is what you're known for. Make a build. Kill everybody with the build. Show everybody the build. Okay, well, I've got the build, my friends. I've created one. You have to keep in mind something. I don't know what everybody else is doing. Whatever the heck the meta is in Korea is also going to be vastly different, because they have classes in Korea that we don't have access to. They have years of experience, they have years of stagnation, by the way, which happens in all games, that we do not have right now in the West, because the majority of the player base is new. And so, forgive me if, for whatever reason, parts of this build do not feel completely foreign to you, because you know a little bit more about the game, but from what I can see, this is not the standard paladin that most people play. What I want to do with this video is explain my thought process. How did I get to this build? And I want to show you PvP all along the way. We dominate. So I started off with a very basic, how do I make myself good? That's what I was thinking of. That's a very basic thought, right? Well, the first thing I needed to do was figure out what stats I want, and the stats in this game are surprisingly complex compared to stats you're used to in the West. Not necessarily because they do complex things, but because their names are not things that we have um, an easy association with things that we're used to. So what does that mean? Because that was kind of a word jumble. Well, endurance Endurance kind of might make sense. You would assume endurance would give you more health, and swiftness, you would assume it might make you attack faster and run faster, and crit might make some sense as well. But what is domination? What is expertise? What is specialization? And what does that mean as well? What is super armor? And why are there so many different kinds? And why can't I move my character every time I try to PvP? These were the things I needed to figure out, not just for me, but for you. Because right now, this game has a lot of players, and the PvP. PvP, believe it or not, is a huge drawing point for a lot of us. That's because there is no barrier for entry. You just play out the standard tutorial, and as soon as you get to the first major city, you can start PvPing on an equal playing field. I said that right. An equal playing field, not a fake equal playing field, a real equal playing field, where the only determining factor in success is your skill and the intricacies and balance factors between the classes themselves, which honestly you can't escape that one right? But there is no gear, not even levels that I need to obtain. There is no special stuff that I have to do in PvE, from what I can see, that I need to do in order to be good in PvP. So the stats were very important, and I want to start off by explaining what each stat does, and then telling you what I came up with, and uh, why I came up with it. Then I want to go over the different abilities that we played with as well. I had a huge, long thought process for why I chose what I chose, I tried a lot of different things, and you might be surprised at what I came up with. So the first thing I had to do is figure out what the stats do, and everything you're going to see is just a copy and paste from a pro game guide's website that I got um, all of this stuff explained to me from. Crit is is just crit, right? It's very, very simple, but if you have no points in crit, you will not crit, and each point you put in crit increases that chance to crit. Seems simple, but there is a bit of nuance there, and that's very, very important if you want to do damage at all. Now, the specialization stat seems to affect your Z and X skill, and that's like your special skill. So as an example with me, I would have Sacred Executioner and a Holy Aura. I changed the keybinds, but that seems to be what it would affect, and I could only assume it affects the damage, maybe increase the percentages, right? 
right on skills like this. That's very interesting. Then there's swiftness. Swiftness simply increases your movement speed and your attack speed, but it does a little bit more nuance, right? These Korean MMOs, man, there's so much nuance and so much built into everything, but uh, it basically reduces your cooldowns, right? So it increases the speed that your class skills cool down. That's how it's described here. And so that's pretty interesting as well if you want to get your spells off, if you're very spell heavy and you also want to go fast. Most players go into swiftness, by the way. That is what I've learned. Most players just put 750 points into swiftness. So you probably will as well. Now, endurance. This affects your character's health and their defense. So that's cool. It's both. This enhances apparently your physical and magical defense. So not just physical. And it also increases the effectiveness of healing and of shields. I have a lot of shields, so that's pretty solid for me. Now, Expertise, what could that possibly be, right? The only other game I can think of with Expertise that I remember is World of Warcraft, which affects your ability to dodge or to get dodged on. And so this increases any debuffs durations that you have, so that could be particularly strong for some classes, not so much for me. But it also increases, apparently, the damage of stagger effects. It also reduces the duration of debuffs that affect your character. So it always seems like these stats can go both ways. They do so much, right? There is so much nuance. And there's also domination. Domination is going to affect how much extra damage you get to do to people that are staggered, pushed, or debuffed. So in general, right? It also increases how quickly you can defeat enemies that you disable in general. So how much damage you do to them. So it's just more damage to people you've CC'd and debuffed in different ways, which could probably be very good. But again, most people seem to go 750 points in swiftness and what I've seen is the basic build also then goes 250 points in crit. Uh, that could change, and I highly suggest you do some theory crafting yourself, but that is what I've seen just like learning around the grapevine. So you can see my character here. I wanted to create something that was quick. I needed to move fast because one thing you will learn very quickly is that while I do seem to have a decent amount of mobility, there is a lot of mobility in this game. And so by, I would say by comparison, right, I am not doing well in the mobility department. So I need the speed, right? And I could definitely use the cooldown reduction. But do I really need the crits? And I'm not exactly sure. So what I decided to try was a little bit of a mixture. And from what I saw when I did this decide to look up other people's grounds. builds, this actually seems to be a pretty common thing that paladins do. You can put one point in crit so that you have that raw, rare chance to crit it all. But then we can put the rest of our points in endurance at 249. And that is something I showed you guys in my paladin video from the other day as well. So the base of how to do my stats has been cemented through all of my trials and errors so far. I did at one point take all points out of endurance and tried crit and after learning more about domination I even considered trying that as well because you'll notice uh, very very soon that my CC potential is absolutely bonkers if I play the game right so that's just more damage right? But I'm going to keep going with this because it simply hasn't failed me and if I'm going for that juggernaut on the battlefield feel I'm doing a pretty good job right now with this version of the build. Now, I didn't come up with this out of nowhere. I actually started off by trying the removal of my ability called charge. This would leave me with only one way to consistently close a gap if this worked, right? And that is the ability dash slash. Reposition yourself and sprint forward. And then of course, when you're done, swing your sword and launch your foes into the air. You also get paralysis immunity. So there are a variety of different what they call super armors in this game. Some classes seem to get access to more versions of this than others. And I want to go over the different super armors real quick before we get into more PvP. So first of all, super armors come in three different types, right? You have paralysis immunity, push immunity, and all immunity, which I haven't seen on my paladin yet. So I don't even know if I get access to this one, uh, but I think for example, the Berserker might, right? So I want to go over what this means. Paralysis immunity is what we could basically call level one CC. So this is the most basic form of CC, probably the most annoying one for you. And that's stagger. Stagger is when you get hit and you can't hit back, right? You're not knocked up or stunned for a super long period of time, but there is a delay because you got smacked by somebody. So what you're going to notice with my pally is that Paladins seem to have a lot of built-in paralysis immunity, meaning all your level 1 CCs that you're just trying to get 
mild advantages with fail on me and that seemingly has given me a decent uh, advantage against a lot of classes but there are some classes that have for example a lot of stuns and a lot of knockups and while I do have some push immunity on this build Pally doesn't have as much um, of push or even any all immunity so there are some things that are just going to be harder for me that's kind of the give or take but if you're talking about paralysis immunity I've got you covered on the Pally so okay what is push immunity it's level 2 CC right and that's going to be your knockup and then all immunity is your hard hard CC like a stun so this is what you have to actually get in your head guys when you're playing this game when you're using an ability that ability will have a type of immunity if the ability with the immunity that you have on it is let's say paralysis immunity but then during the usage of that ability you are hit by a knockup effect which would be a push immunity you will get knocked up mid ability and it will cancel and that really really sucks abilities that don't even have paralysis immunity then by my assumption are going to be very difficult to land in pvp so this means the way to get good at this game is quite literally to understand the super armors, understand what other classes are at least generally capable of doing to you. So, you know, I can't expect even myself to memorize every single class so quickly. It's simply too much information, right? But I can get a general idea. So you can always know from now on that paladins have really good paralysis immunity, a little bit of push immunity, but if you want to stun them, you never will fail. If you want to knock them up, most of the time you won't fail. But if you want to simply stagger them, you've really got to play your cards right because that's going to be a hard one. Okay, and then you can do the same thing for other classes as well. Okay, so with that being said, what is the build that I came up with and how exactly is it performing? I'm going to quickly go over the abilities for the build and then I'll show you guys some gameplay. First and foremost, Executor's Sword. Hold your sword in both hands, swing it, and knock somebody into the air. I've also taken Broad Slash. To me, this is very particularly something that I do that I don't see anybody else doing. Now, you guys need to keep in mind so I can be real. Lots of pallies are using Holy Sword. I don't really like it. Isn't that something? Like, when I use it, it feels wrong, but I probably just have to practice it. Now, the Executor Sword is something you can kind of see, but I'm not seeing it in a lot of meta builds that you could just Google on a guide, for example. So, it's a very interesting thing, let alone with the Broad Slash. I think a lot of people would take Executioner's Strike because they think, okay, 100% of the total damage instantly done immediately that's pretty good broad slash though gives it 50 percent more damage and that's it but it also changes the arc this to a wide slash good. instead of an upward hit right and this is going to be very important because here's the thing about executor sword as you can see right here it is a mid stagger so that's a pretty solid stagger now here's the thing about executor sword with a wide slash it is damn near impossible to miss. And what we're trying to do with this weapon and with this attack is stun our target as long as we can. In this case, actually, it would be a stagger, right? But we're going to CC them for as long as we can. Now, we double down on that with more spells that people don't use as often, specifically for the stagger chain. I've got punishment. It's just another, you know, multi-tiered melee attack that I've changed to give it a leap attack. So we can go ahead and look at that. The last attack from this attack changes into a jump and slam down, giving me slightly more mobility, by the way, and also basically knocks people into the air a and inflicts 60% more damage. I wish these guys would quit talking, by the way, like when I'm trying to talk. Anyway, doesn't really matter. It's a mid stagger. Now I've got two. That's quite good. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind as well with punishment. The first tier gives me access to concussion, changing it to a mid to high stagger. Again, Eastern MMOs, extremely complex, right? But okay, that's even better now i decided to keep the dash slash ultimately to maintain as much mobility as i can get and that's just another way to you know fly to my targets and then we have the charge now you'll notice with all of these first four blue skills i have the paralysis immunity super armor meaning when i'm casting all of these i'm not going to be staggered and that's pretty strong now, on the bottom tier, I decided to go for, originally I was trying to use more magic, but I opted for an extra blue ability. Now, the blue ones are significant because they are what we call punish skills for the paladin. Punish skills get this a boost in power house. and a boost in range when I use my class-based, spec-based ability right, what is going to be A and D for me, in this case, Sacred Executioner. So when I use Sacred Executioner, all of my blue skills do more damage and have more range, and while I'm up in Sacred Execution, 
executioner stance uh, i have push immunity which is pretty good as well so pushes knock ups that sucks and this is very very good against like striker for example so i have five of those now let's start with the first one though with just light shock so it turns out i got onto too much of a digression on the other spells and i didn't finish talking about light shock this is just going to end up being a ranged stun that also slows my target by 40 percent as well and uh that's pretty good i also made it go super fast so as soon as i use it um bam um they're basically stunned it also reduces the cooldown by taking the splendid sphere effect Again, I'm just going to say it. Light shock is paralysis immunity as well. So is execution of justice. So when I can get my proc up here on sacred executioner, which just comes from playing my class, by the way, over time, um, then I will have quite a lot of paralysis immunity and quite a lot of pushback immunity, meaning stuns are your only way to really deal with me. Outside of sacred executioner, I don't have a lot of pushed immunity, but I do have some. Um, starting off, by the way, with abilities like Wrath of God. You can see I actually took tenacity with Wrath of God. Let's look at that. This Tenacity gives me push immunity when I use the skill. And so this is good because I'm not going to miss this skill. And I don't want to miss this skill specifically because I have Light's Guardian, which does 150% more damage after the fact and knocks people away. It's a pretty solid attack. I really enjoy using it because I can double down on it with Heavenly Blessings. Another AoE effect that summons a Solar Guardian doing damage to everybody and giving everybody a 20% damage reduction buff. That's pretty solid as well. It also is going to be increasing the attack power of me and my team and does with the Heavenly Requiem um, last tier, right? 300% more damage and 20% more AoE. So this is solid, right? I'm in melee range. I'm just doing AoE to everybody when I get in there and I'm doubling down on that finally with Execution of Justice, my last punish skill. It's another basically, uh, you know, a whirlwind type of effect. I've also got it pulling people into the center of me this when I whirlwind. Wind, which is pretty solid as well i've got extra damage especially more when i'm in sacred executioner status 100 percent more and then express fury this actually increases how long i spin makes the spin attack damage do more damage and when it's done it summons a dude actually a sword sorry and then that sword summons three what they call lights lightning that's spread out and uh that is interesting it gives 200 percent more damage to that uh last attack on it as well it's all very loaded maybe be a lot to take in but if you're a pally main it'll make more sense if you're looking through the skills and by the way for my ult i tried both i think alethane's judgment is cooler and more fun but i think alethane's light is just better it goes off slightly faster and more consistent you actually have push immunity during it which is quite nice you have the same immunity on alethane's judgment but it's a circle right so you have this circle of damage you're doing versus a giant line and you can actually turn slightly during the attack it seems and then you can just smash people with this for huge amounts you can see 46,000 damage which is a lot okay and so that's basically what i'm going with that was a mouthful uh there are going to be timestamps though for this so you probably skipped it or whatnot if you didn't want to see it but what i want to show you guys now is some pvp with the build i just showed you
So yeah, it was just full of travesty. But the reason I show that is to show you that it's okay to fail. That sometimes a build you make that fails is not actually bad. You just don't know how to play it yet. Let me show you what happened after a little bit of practice. Big time. Go, go. So yeah, just a casual 1v2 and then half the health of the very last guy. Killed two tier 1s, by the way, in the process. And then we were able to win um, pretty freaking easily. Uh, so yeah, this build, as you can see, comes out of nowhere, okay? Comes out of nowhere with crazy burst incredibly good combos if you land one spell you could just keep chaining it and as you can see my damage i i think i actually had more damage than every other person who had the opportunity to do damage combined just at first glance 120 well yeah yeah literally by like a hundred thousand that's not a joke man dps paladin is pretty good and i had the highest battlefield score as well but okay guys that's gonna be the end of this video i just wanted to show you guys my dps pally build it's really good lots of cc very easy to play fairly straightforward and also hopefully for those of my viewers that are mostly world of warcraft watchers explaining the super armors and the different stats and all that hopefully helps make some stuff make sense at the same time so if you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a like and a subscribe but i'll see you in the next one mcdoubles out